Hey folks, this is Lab 8, and this week we're going to look at GUIs and uh, graphics with regard to JavaFX. And so before we get started in Lab this week, there's a couple of things that you got to do to get the JavaFX working in your IntelliJ. So um, if you haven't already been here, you're going to go to azul.com, and I do that in a web browser. And then you're going to hit the Download Now button up in the top corner. And you're going to scroll down until you find this section where it says download Azul builds of OpenJDK. For Java version, you're going to want to choose Java 13. For operating system, you're going to want to match your operating system. I'm on Windows. For architecture, you're probably on 64-bit, but you might be on 32. Most of the people are on 64. And then most importantly, in Java package, you're going to choose Java JDK FX. Make sure you get the FX one, not the regular JDK one, or it won't work. Once you select those things appropriately, you're going to be left with one choice, most likely, which is this one, and you're going to want to download that zip file. So that's going to give you a zip file, which is going to be stored in your downloads directory on your computer. And so if you go to your downloads directory, you should find it in there. And then from there, you're going to want to unzip that. So you're going to want to say extract, wherever that is in the menu. Okay, well, if you can't find extract, then just double click on it and then say, um, all right, there's 7-zip. Okay, well, anyway, you're going to extract it however you have an extract menu, and that will save it somewhere. Wherever you put it, it doesn't matter where you put it, just remember that. Okay, next thing you're going to do after you've downloaded it and unzipped it, you're going to come in and you're going to start a new project. Now, up until now, you've always been picking Java, but this time you're going to pick um, Java FX instead. You're going to give it a, um, a name. And then down here where it says Project SDK, you're going to say Add JDK. And then you're going to choose the location where you just unzipped the files, which would probably be C colon users, E sully, and then it's going to be the downloads directory if that's where I put it. And you're going to choose the Azul download that you have. When you do that, you're going to see that's now going to be another option in the menu. There may be more than two in your menu, but you definitely need to have an Azul 13 that's going to work for you. All right, once you have that, you've given it a name, you've chosen your SDK, you hit Next. Uh, you don't need to include any of the dependencies, you're just going to hit Finish, and that's going to give you this window. The very first thing you're going to want to do, after it loads, you're going to get a little green um, Play button here next to um, Class Hello Application. You're going to want to run that and make sure that it pops open a window that has a button in it that says hello. And if you click that button, it should say welcome to JavaFX. If you're getting a blank window, the button's not there, or it's just simply refusing to compile, you have the wrong JDK. You didn't select it correctly. So you're going to need to go back and do that again until you get to the point that you have this window. If you don't have this window, there's no point in continuing because this is a necessary prerequisite. OK, so what I'm going to do uh, today is I'm going to build just a little window that has a couple of buttons in it for keeping track of a score in a basketball game. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to comment out all of the default stuff that they give me, um, which is that. And that's all commented out at this point. And I'm going to begin by creating a grid pane. So I'm going to say grid pane, my grid equals new grid pane. A grid pane is just a layout. It looks like an Excel spreadsheet where you've got rows and columns, and it allows you to put stuff in specific places on the screen. You'll notice that this is in red, and almost everything I'm going to type from here on out is going to end up in red. I'm going to leave my mouse on there, and I'm going to hit Alt-Enter, and it's going to say, what do you want to do? And I'm going to say, I want you to import the class, and then it did it for me. If you, click, if you put your mouse over these three dots, you'll see there's a bunch of JavaFX imports, including grid pane as a layout in there now. Um, so that's given me a grid pane. Next up, I'm going to make a, um, a, a scene. And so I'm going to say scene, my scene equals new scene. And then I'm going to pass it my grid. And I'm going to ask for it to be 200 by 200 is the size of the window that I want. OK, down at the very bottom, uh, the last thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to tell it to actually render that scene. And so um, I was passed in a variable called stage, so I'm going to say stage dot set scene uh, my scene, and finally I'm going to tell stage to show. 
All right, so with all of that, if I hit run, I should now end up with a blank window, <laughs> which isn't very exciting, but at least I have a blank window that's 200 by 200, and that is mine. Now I can start adding things to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a label. In graphic terms, a label is just a block of text. So I'm going to call this header, and it's going to be a new label, and it's going to say score. All right, and again, those are red. Put my mouse over it, all to enter. It says import class, and boom, there you have it. All right, I'm going to make another label, which I'm going to call uh, team one, and it's going to be a new label, which is going to say team one, and then it's going to show the current score for team one. All right, now that's a variable that I need to create. So up here at the top of my class, I'm going to say int t1 score equals zero and int t2 score equals zero. So I've made two variables that I can now use down here. All right, I'm going to make a third label. Uh, this is going to be for team two, and that's going to be a new label. And that's team two, and we're going to do plus t2 score. All right, so now I have uh, three labels. I'm going to go ahead and stick them into my grid. So I'm going to say my grid dot add, and then I'm going to add the header. All right, now header is this thing that I created up here that says score. I want this in the middle, so I'm going to put this in the second column. Um, this is very, very strange, but the first parameter that you pass is the column, and the second parameter you pass is the row. That's backwards to how you would normally think about it, so just be careful with that. So I'm going to put this into um, column two. There's nothing in column one or column zero right now, but I'm going to put it in column two, and I'm going to put it in row zero, which is right up at the top. All right, so let me just run that and make sure that that shows up pretty much where I would expect, which is towards the top of the window, and it does. Now, it's putting it on the left-hand side right now, and that's simply because there's nothing in any of the other cells. If I was to tell it to show the grid, all of the lines would be vertical on the left side, and then this would be in the second cell, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to put something in the first cell, my grid dot add. I'm going to put team one into column one, row zero, and then I'm going to add... Um, team two into column three, row zero. All right, so that should put them just underneath it, left and right of it. And we're going to hit run again and take a look at it. Okay, so clearly that didn't work. Um, and that's because I wanted to put the team one and team two on the next row. So that shouldn't be row zero, it should be row one. So let me run that again. Sometimes you're just going to have to play with it and see it. I'm kind of visual, so I have to try it and see what it looks like. All right, so that all looks good, except for one thing, which is that Team 2 is starting with a score of 20. And I'm not really sure why that is. Oh, it's because it's Team 2, and I forgot the colon and the, uh, the space. All right, let's try it again. Let's see what we look like. Okay, that looks reasonable. Team 1 is 0, Team 2 is 0, and there's my score. All right, so underneath each of those, I'm going to have a button that's going to allow me to add a score to each of them. So I can press a button when either side scores. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create button, and this is going to be T1 button equals new button, and I'm going to put the word score on the button. I'm going to make another button, T2 button equals new button, and again, it's going to say score. All right, and again, Alt-Enter to get those added in. So you can spell button correctly, that will be helpful. All right, and we're going to stick those into my grid. And this is going to be T1 button. I'm going to want that in column one, but in row three, uh, row two. And I'm going to want my grid add the T2 button in column three, row two. So that puts them underneath the score. So hopefully I should have the, the score and then a button underneath each of them. And there it is. All right, so right now these buttons do nothing, and that's because I haven't coded a event handler for either of them but I now have the basic layout of what I wanted. All right, so next up, what we're going to do is we are going to start adding event handlers. All right, so for button T1, I'm going to say T1 button dot set on action. And then you notice that it's suggesting that I'm going to type event handler. And what I'm going to want to do in there is I'm going to want to do event handler. Uh, there was a new on front of that. That's what's wrong. 
should have automatically completed it for me. So I'm going to do new. There we go. And now it gives me event handler action event. I'm going to select that out of there or just hit tab and it's going to fill in the rest of the method for me automatically. All right. And so once you type in the new, there it is. So this is T1, which is the name of the button. I typed set on action, open print, new, and then when I hit tab, it filled all the rest of this in for me. So in here, I get to do whatever I want to do. So every time I press this button, and this is the T1 button, that's the one on the left-hand side, what I want to do is I want to add one to my T1 score. So T1 score plus plus, and then I'm going to have to reset the label because the label was rendered already. So if I want to change the label, I'm going to have to redo it. So I'm going to say team one, which is the name of the label up here that has the team one score, dot set text, and I'm going to set it to team one colon plus T1 score. So it's I'm getting I'm setting it to the same exact text as was up here, but it's being reset every time that the button is pressed. All right, likewise, we're going to do the same thing for T2 button. Um, dot set on action, and then new event handler, there it is, and I'm going to say T2 score plus plus, and I'm going to say team2 dot set text uh, team2 colon plus T2 score. All right, so let's run this guy and see what we get. So hopefully we have that same layout as before, but each time I press the button, that score is going to increment. And that looks reasonable. And likewise over here, that one seems to in increment as well. And of course I could add other buttons for three points and anything else that I wanted to have, but that's a very basic score that allows me to see variables and set them. So hopefully this made sense. This is how you would lay out a, um, any kind of a form that you're creating. Um, this is probably the simplest way to do it. You create a grid, you add the individual items into the grid, and really the only items I ever dealt with here were labels and buttons. The buttons are going to generally have event handlers, and that's done through this set on action, which is how you specify what you want the button to do when it's pressed. Um, to be clear, you could have it say anything you wanted. Um, so for example, so I'm just going to run this again. And what I've done is I've added in another line on here. And so you notice when I press this, it says scored, 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 yay. All right, so you can do anything you want with this. Um, obviously, that's not particularly helpful, so um, there we have it. Okay, so that is the, um, the basics of how you would go about creating a form um, inside of JavaFX. Um, if you're doing something in JavaFX for um, the graphic side of the world, then take a look at the lecture video um, for this week, and you'll see an example in there where I do some stuff with the um, drawing lines and circles and stuff like that, which is what you're going to be doing probably in your assignment. All right, well, that's it for this week. You guys have some fun building little GUIs, and I will see you next week.